God's Word in His house today. Amen? Amen. The precious Word of God. The Holy Canon. Oh, how sweet His Word is. A lamp unto our feet. Look at verse 7, Philippians 3. But what things were gained to me, now this is, of course, Paul, those I counted loss for Christ. Yeah, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Verse 12, not as though I had already attained, Either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark, for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if anything ye <clears throat> be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for your precious word. As we come to the time as we break the bread of life here and we study your word for just uh, a service here this morning. Father, let it sink into our hearts. Father, let us change us. Uh, let, let it transform us. Father, if need be, let, as we believe in it, let it save us. If there's one here that's never truly been saved, for it's by your word. Father, we see here Paul writing to the church, and Father, thank you as we can learn so much as the Holy Spirit guided his pen. Father, go with us through the service today, for it's in Christ's name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. So we see here that Paul is writing in the message uh, today I titled, Reaching Towards the Goal. If, if I'm uh, able to title God's Word, I'm so careful trying to break it and put it in sections and name it, because I love the whole counsel of God. Amen. But we do that just in order that we can kind of get a perspective where we're at in the scriptures. And so I titled it Reaching Towards the Goal. And Paul starts out really bold. But we need to understand or we think he's going to be repeating himself. Paul was a man that had a resume that would knock the socks off a church. This man was taught from childhood the law. This man was a, a studious, just, just a student of the Old Testament. And he was a Pharisee. And he had a long resume that he could share with you that would probably surpass any of our resumes here as far as the church goes. Pages and pages he could write. Theologies of the Old Testament he could write. He was a proud student. And then when this Christ thing began to come into the Bible, he went out and he said, no, that's not how you do it. So he began to persecute the church. He began to lead away Christians in chains to prison. Christians being killed. Churches being burned. as They were just getting started. And yet this man had a resume that you couldn't match and yet was doing harm to the church. And then we know the story in Acts chapter 9. Paul is on the Damascus Road 
And the Lord appeared unto him there and said, What are you doing? He said, Lord, is it you? It's amazing how Apostle Paul was saved that day. And that day, he began, or he knew Christ the moment he was saved. So these first few verses here, or a couple of verses, 7 through 8, this is when Paul was, was being saved. He's writing about being saved here. And, and this happens at the moment you and I believe. He said, but what things were gained to me, all those religious things, maybe we could say, and I know it wasn't written then, but carried a King James Version Bible and came to the temple to pray every day. He was righteous. He was a good man. He was all of these things, and he was lost. And he said, you know, now once he met Christ, he said, all those things that I, I thought I was really gaining, I, I thought I had a relationship with God. I thought me and God was close. And I realized I didn't know God. I just knew God through the head knowledge, not heart knowledge. And then he says this, I, I've counted loss. All of the things that was so important to me. Now you that are saved, you, can, you, can, you know this. The moment you are saved, all of those things that was so important to you, that all those worldly, fleshly things that you was involved in, where do they rank in your life now? You was pretty foolish, wasn't you? <laughs> so was I. Throwed away a lot of things, got rid of a lot of things. Straightened up, cleaned up because of his righteousness, not of mine. But he says, I, I count them for a loss. Hey, now, wait a minute. He's counting them for a loss. He said, you're gone, you're gone, you're gone. I'm not doing that, I'm not doing that. And he said, I'm counting every one of you because bye-bye. Because I am not about myself. I'm not about religion. I now know Christ. And boy, you're talking about a change, Apostle Paul. Believers understand that what we gain in the flesh can never be as important as the treasures we have in Christ. Now at the time before we were saved, our treasures meant so much to us. And now if you look back on your life, those treasures you held so dearly are now somewhere in the dust. And you can hardly remember the treasures you've had because you know that loving and serving Christ is more important than even loving and serving yourself. So as we begin the new year, I pray that today that you are truly saved. Uh, here Paul is talking about salvation. What is the desire of a Christian? To reveal our treasures to others? No, to reveal the treasures that we have in Christ, the riches in Christ Jesus. That's what we reveal to others. At the moment we are saved, you begin to understand and know this. Automatically when the Holy Spirit comes in, you don't have to dance till your shoes fall off. It, that's not the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes in, you are a brand new creature in Christ. Man. All of those other things are gone. Right. You know, and I think back sometimes, man, I miss my old self. Anyone else ever do that? <laughs> I'm the only one, Richard. Just me. And then I think of Jesus. And I thought, what a foolish thought. Hmm? So as we continue on, I understand this when I got saved too. Now watch. Now this is Apostle Paul I'm preaching on here. But I understood that those things that I thought I, were, I was doing 
to improve my relationship with God that I was doing. I, I knew that I had to somehow find God. And, and I know that all of the things that I was doing on my own surely would improve my relationship with God. Maybe if I sang in a choir, I played football when I was younger to church, if I would stack up the hymnals, if I would greet everybody with a smile, if I bought myself a new Bible and come to church, all of those things I, that I believed my works could improve my relationship with God failed. <laughs> it just failed. They wouldn't work. But I begin to understand that God, by his marvelous grace, clothed me and he clothed you in righteousness the moment you believed in Jesus. Amen? Look at verse 8. Yeah, doubtless, I'm going to try to uh, put it in some easier language here. Yeah, doubtless, or Paul is saying, but rather, I count all things. You see, I, I, I didn't get to choose when I was saved, praise God. Oh, I wanted to. I didn't get to choose to say this. Uh, wait a minute, I've been saved and I love Jesus. But I got this old camel say this right here. This is my little trailer. I'm not talking about a keepsake or something like that that you have in memory. And I'm talking about the works of the flesh. Where we don't go, what we don't see, what we don't look at, what we don't feel, what we don't do in the flesh. Paul is talking about here. He's not talking about all things. I count all my family as lost. No, that's not what Paul was talking about. Paul was talking about those things that I was doing in the flesh that made others think I was religious and even made me thought I was religious and somehow in my flesh I was going to improve and somehow I was going to find God. And I know what because I, I've been going to church. It doesn't work. He says, I count all things but loss. <laughs> oh, for the excellency, just the knowledge of Christ Jesus the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. You said, now wait a minute. You just said that knowledge, not head knowledge, but heart knowledge. That is right. You are correct. Because the knowledge that is used here is gnosis, which means relationship. So you could read it this way. I count all things uh, but for loss, just for the excellency in my relationship with Christ. And then he says this. My Lord. You say, we just read that, and that's the title for Jesus. No, 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 hang on, don't, don't, don't skip over that. You see, there's a lot of people that, that are saved. They are, they're truly saved. And yet Jesus is not the Lord of their life. They're still playing Lord. They still do what they want, when they want, where they want, and why they want. Be careful. Paul says, oh, Jesus Christ, my Lord. And he says, oh, I suffer the loss of all things. I suffer those things. When you start putting away all your toys from the flesh, man, that, that kind of hurts, don't it? And, but Paul says, well, just do it like this. Just count them as rubbish. That you may win or that you may gain Christ. Hmm. In Romans 6, 6, it says this, knowing this, now here's your salvation, that the old man, you, who you are, your will inside, your heart, it's, it's your, it's about you. Well, I know it's about me. It, me is about me. What, what's your problem? It's me. It's about, but you see, when you come to Christ, I can't find me anymore. Oh, that old man can, can, can show his head from time to time. But look at Romans 6, 6, and I'll read this here. It says, knowing this, you know this. Talking about those that believe. That our old man is crucified with him. That the body of sin might be destroyed. And hereforth we shall no longer serve sin. That's one of my goals for the new year. That I would no longer serve sin. Christians do 
serve sin because we're not sinless. Verse 9. Now watch this quickly here at the Bema seat. That's when believers come before God uh, in glory. Paul says this, I want to be found in him. When I stand before God, we talk about a New Year's ago. When I stand before God, I want God to tell me and to know that my life was just in him. Nothing else. That doesn't mean you don't go to work. That doesn't mean that you, you don't do the normal things of life. We've got to live on the earth. Paul so tents together for a living. And he, he, he done so many other different types of works and things. And, but that's not what he's talking about. We know where we are spiritually. And this is what Paul is saying. When I stand before God, I want him to say that I'm just found in him. Not, not in myself. Him. Just found in him. And because he, you say, well, how do you know it's him and him? Well, it says, because having not my own righteousness. Which is of the law. Now he's referring back. You know, I was a schoolboy of the Old Testament, you see. But that which is through faith in Christ, you see. That, that's what I want to be recognized for when I come to glory God. My life, may, may it be hid in Christ. Not my righteousness. And is of God by faith. Verse 10. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. I believe Paul here is talking about his relationship with Christ and he wanted to know the resurrection power because he knew when he died that he was in Christ and he too would be resurrected. You see, we have a hope that the whole world don't have. The believers have a hope and Paul says this, that I may know him. I know him so intimately that when Christ resurrected, I will resurrect one day too. That's the power of his resurrection. He is risen. That's not our power. We can't raise ourselves. Only Christ. And I love when in John 14, we've, we've studied, and you've heard this many, many times, that I go to prepare a place for you, and I will come again and listen. He's coming for the believers. When we die, we know that our spirit goes into heaven, absent from the body, present with the Lord. We know this. And then we also know that our body, it goes to the ground. Our body is finished. It's expired. But one day, he said, oh, he said that I know Christ. That one day, my body is going to be resurrected. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, if you want to read on, on our, the resurrection program of God. But look at here, also in this verse. And the fellowship of his sufferings. Now watch this. I try to keep this in my mind. I do. Especially if I, I think I'm going to do wrong. <laughs> I try to say, mm -hmm, Lord, mm -hmm, Lord, help me, you know. Paul knew. Paul was a part of. I used to be a part of, and I knew too. Oh, I didn't want to admit it. Before I was saved. That Christ suffered on this earth. And because Christ suffered on this earth, Paul realized that he, he, he suffered for himself too. Christ suffered for Paul. You know that Christ suffered for you. All since his birth, all the way to the cross, was for you. Paul knew that. Paul was trying to crucify Christ in, in, in his flesh, trying to to go against the church and the program of God. You wasn't for a church. You was a you probably made fun of the church folks. You didn't want none of that Jesus stuff. You are right the way you are. God will accept and you know you know that didn't work and you come to Christ in faith by God's grace. But he says this. Paul knew that Christ suffered on this earth for him. 
And Paul knows now he will suffer for Christ. Hmm. Wow. You see, the Bible doesn't teach health and wealth and prosperity. Sure, there's blessings. It doesn't teach that's how your relationship with God is. If you're healthy and wealthy and, and boy, you just full of, you're on the mountain all the time. And boy, God's dealing with you and giving you and giving you and giving. That's not what the Bible teaches. Jesus said, if the world hated me, it's going to hate you. Jesus said, I suffered in this world. And if you're going to be a follower of me, so if you just say, oh, Jesus, I love you and I got saved, and you go about your own way, you're not going to suffer. You're trying to ride the fence, you see. You know, that fence gets a little sore. I grew up in the country, huh? That wire don't feel good after a while, right? you got to go forward or backwards. There's no neutral position in God. So Paul knows that when you are saved, when you are truly saved, that you're going to, you're going to suffer. Why? Because of the world is against Christ. So, and I was against Christ when I was in the flesh. Uh, look at verse 11. If by any means I might attain into the erection of, of the dead. And here's a short version of that theology. If I'm alive or I'm a dead, it ain't going to matter because when Christ returns, he's taking me home. That's a real quick explanation. I believe Paul is talking about the rapture of the church here. Now let's look at verse 12. Let's look at Paul's zeal. Look at this in your new year. Now, we've, we've went through salvation, kind of explaining how Paul turned his life around. It was all about Christ. It was in Christ, through Christ. Now, let's look at verse 12. Now, here is something that I struggle with all the, every day. Every day I struggle with. Yes, I read the Word of God. Yes, I love the Word of God. I love the church here and, and, and love my family and even Lauren, I mean, that I messed up on. Love, love all your friends. And, yeah, of course. Well, I love Jesus. Well, well, surely I do. But sometimes I get in my head that I'm so smart, that I'm living so good, that I have come to complete satisfaction in my growing in the Lord. Father, there's no much, there's no higher that I can go in you. And then I realized how foolish to think those thoughts. How foolish. Look at verse 12. Not as though I had already attained either we're already perfect. Now, someone's going to say this a lot of times. They're going to say perfect. Well, that's why you keep following. No, it's, yes, it is, but no, it's not. Perfect is not sinless. If you want a pastor that's sinless, you will never have a pastor. If you want a family that's sinless, you don't have a family. If you know that you are sinless, you need Christ. <laughs> It can't work. So when he's saying here, although I haven't attained, either we're already perfect, the word perfect there means complete spiritual maturity. Do you know that the Lord, what's that little song, the Lord's still working on me? Amen? What's he wanting us to do? To mature spiritually? Um, he says here, uh, spiritually, I have not reached my end goal. That's one of my goals for the new year. I hope it's yours. To what? To continue to grow in Christ. Don't think that you have reached the plateau. You're the preacher. You're the Sunday school teacher. You're the deacon. You are the member of this church that never misses a service. And you read your Bible daily. And you just can't learn no more and go no further in Jesus. That's not true. For I'm a long way from spirit... Uh, from maturity, uh, spiritual maturity. As a matter of fact, Paul says, I still don't have it. I'm reaching for it, but I don't have it. And as long as you have that hunger, 
As long as you keep reaching for it to grow in Christ, you will continue to grow. When you think, ah, that's it, I've got it all ready, got my theology down, ah, I got this Bible, I got it. No, you don't. No, I don't. Because if we quit growing, our relationship with God begins to grow very dim. Amen? It will. So Paul is saying, I've not reached my end goal. I'm not complete. I'm not fully developed. I'm not fully mature in what God desires me to be. We have a new year. We have a new year. Realize that you're not done growing yet. Realize that God is not done with you yet. Realize that you still have goals to reach in Christ Jesus. And then he says this. He says, but I follow after. I'm following. I, I'm going to keep on traveling. I'm following after. I'm pressing hard after. I'm chasing earnestly to grow, to continue to grow in Christ and then here's one of these sentences that's kind of hard. That I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Ooh, okay. Uh, let me try to break that down for a minute. Um, believers should not refuse to seize or possess that for which Christ apprehended us for. Got that? We'll move on. <laughs> Don't stop reaching and growing for Christ because Christ desires us to continue to grow in Him and to begin to mature in doing those things that God has called us to do. Amen? Well, verse 13. We're getting there. Verse 13. This is one of the main goals that I have to do. And I know you do too. Verse 13 is forgetting the past. Forgetting the past. What are you forgetting? Your loved ones? No. Memories of your... No. Those are not things that you're forgetting. Well, if I can forget, you know... My great-great-grandpa, you know, if I can forget that he passed away. No, 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 that's not what the Bible says. Forgetting those times in the past where you failed God. Mm -hmm. Hang on. Verse 13. Brethren, he's talking to the church, the children of God. He says, I count not. He says, I'm not calculating. I'm not trying to put it in a number to myself to have apprehended. I have not obtained the intimate knowledge of Christ that I desire. He's still talking about growing here. Still talking about growing. You say, now wait a minute, he already talked about growing. Well, if you're going to forget the past, that's what you have to do in order to grow. That's why he's putting these things together in verse 13. Let me read it through and listen to this. Brethren, I count not myself to apprehended to reach spiritual maturity. But this one thing I do, this is what i got to do. This is what I've got to do. He says, forgetting those things which are behind in order to grow in Christ. If you're mad at someone, Last year, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, you ain't talked to her and you don't plan to again. Why are you carrying that around? Why do we in our hearts and mind carry around circumstances that we have never been able to control? If I'd have done this, if I'd have done that, if he would have, she would have. The things that Paul is talking about here is our unrighteous works. <laughs> Have any of them last year? Just me? Again? Those times when you knew to witness at the workplace. You knew that God desired 
requires you in obedience to whatever you're reading in the Word of God as commandments. You know to act and talk and be that way is not the way that Christ would want you to be. We all go through that. We all struggle with that. We all struggle with the flesh. Paul says, look, let those things go. I still remember back. When my cousin made me so angry, I'm still mad about him. Really? 18 years ago, you're still mad at your cousin? Then how are you going to go forward in Christ? Boy, I failed Jesus this last year, and I can't get it off my mind. I have tried everything I knew I should have and could have and would have and all of these things. Satan will bring up your past continually in order that you will not go forward. Again, amen? amen? Look how you fail, you miserable Christian. You think God loves you. Look at you, how you're talking and act. Oh, you look big now. That's not God. That's, that's Satan talking to us. That's our flesh. But look here. He says this. I want to forget those things. That's the things I do. I forget those things which are behind. Those, those moments in the flesh that we didn't know that we'd ever do that. We did. The setbacks, the disappointments in life, things we can't control. But if you'd have done one more thing or one thing less, you could have controlled the situation. Let it go. Let it go. The sins we've committed that one time when I went to that one place and asked forgiveness from God that has the power to forgive sins and leave your baggage at the door. Drop it. Let it go. Get rid of it because if you don't, you can't reach to the goals that you want to obtain in Christ Jesus in the new year. Forgetting those things which are behind. But now wait a minute. Equally important, he said, reaching forth, you see, to those things which are before. Don't dwell in your past failures, disappointments, and troubles of these things. Now we've got to get moving. I'm almost out of time. Then in the commentary, I read this. I don't know this gentleman, but I read this out of the commentary. He says, to forget in the Bible means to no longer be influenced by or affected by. I like that. It's when we don't allow the past to control our present. While we can't wipe stuff out of our memory banks, we can break the power of the past by allowing the Lord to to unleash us from its influence. Amen. Amen. I got a lot of garbage down in there that, you know, I, I kind of stir around from time to time. Is there anyone else with me this time? Amen. Amen. All right. Come on, let's go. Psalm is beautiful. It says, I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Reaching forth to those things which are before. Extending yourself. It means in actual to stretch your muscles, to reach forward so hard to the goals in Christ. Verse 14. He says, I press toward the mark. That is a word for goal. The prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You see how Paul is writing? He always likes to write now that he is saved. Uh, you know, God this and God that and God this and God in my life, knowledge of God, knowledge of God, this and God, my life and God in Christ Jesus. Because he knows Christ Jesus is the only way that we can have a relationship with God. I press toward the goal for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ. He says, I, I press, 
You know, it's like basketball. You got basketball fans. You, 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 have, a, you have a press on the court. You, you, you're trying to pursue and, and to obtain control. You, 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 it's a press, a full court press, they call it. In Greek, it means a hunter that's eagerly pursuing his prey. Well, why do we pressing toward this goal, the prize of the high calling of God? What does this mean? To live a life that's pleasing to God, that's revealed in His holy word. What a goal. What a goal. I could have went through a bunch of Greek there and tried to explain it, but that's exactly what he's talking about. Reaching towards that goal is living your life in such a way that it pleases the Father. How do we do that? Well, stretching and, and trying to grow, continue to grow, and know that we're not done growing, forgetting the past and reaching forward to. Look at verse 15. This is our last verse. We find that word perfect again. He said, let us therefore, so now Paul is done with himself. He's teaching the church, and now he says, but let us, he says, be perfect. Let us be sinless. No. Let us be mature, spiritually mature. And if in anything you're otherwise minded, God shall reveal this unto you. Let all Christians do this. Let all Christians have this attitude. For we are no longer babes in Christ. Let us be Christ-likeness. Let us grow. Let us continue to reach forward in this new year. Let us be thus minded. As the church here, Paul says, this is how I do this. And this is how I reach the goals. To live a life that's pleasing to the Father in Christ Jesus. He said, now let us. So the church is supposed to be thus minded. In these passages of reaching and growing in Christ. As we close today, I pray that that you and I that we forget those things, those unrighteous, if you want to be blunt, those sins. Well, the times we messed up, the times we failed God, the times we disobeyed, the time we went our own way, on and on and on. That we forget those things. I unpacked a suitcase or just lift a whole suitcase and just throw it down at the door. You're in a new year. Don't let the past hinder this new year serving Christ Jesus. Amen. That's what the whole message was today. My prayer for you today for the new year is number one make sure that you are saved. What is saved? Believing in Christ Jesus. Believing in him. That he is the son of God. That he died for you on the cross. That he has the power to forgive sins, and he has the power to change your life and give you life eternal. Grace from God allows us to be saved, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. But my prayer also is for the saved here today. If you are saved, read your Bible all the way through this year. You say, well, that's a simple prayer. That's a hard task. Can I get an Amen. Get stuck in the book of Numbers for months. Amen. <laughs> you say, why is that so important? Because when you read your Bible daily, that is the beginning steps of growing closer to God and serving Him faithfully. Amen.